Hello dear viewers, it's not a walk to work with Whittaker, this is in fact a perambulate with Picard. Yep, I've watched the first episode of Picard, I'm not walking to work, I'm actually walking to the dentist, so this will cheer me up a bit. Uh, yeah, but Picard episode one, Remembrance, watched that last night with my other half, we're both big Star Trek fans, we are both big Next Generation fans, he's also a really big Voyager fan, so there's something coming up that he's going to enjoy as well. Um, but yeah, what a way to open the show. I really enjoyed it. I thought that where we find Picard is a believable place for him to be, ooh, 20 odd years after we've last seen him. And I thought this episode does a lot of very good world building, you know, showing us what has happened in the last 20 years, because I think the last year of Voyager is set in 2377, and we're now in 2399. So yeah, we're further than we've been generally in Star Trek. You know, the odd, uh, the odd scene or two in Enterprise, notwithstanding. And yeah, I love Patrick Stewart's portrayal here. Some people have said, oh, he's not like Picard, Picard wouldn't have run away. This is a Picard who has lost his best friend and then lost belief in the organisation that gave him meaning. I can totally see him taking over the family business. The family business, of course, being where his brother and nephew died. And that's where he retreats to, if you like. The world building of the interview with the, um, with the reporter who presses him on why he was so sympathetic to the Romulans. It's much better than Patrick Stewart giving us an info dump. Not that Patrick Stewart couldn't, not that Patrick Stewart couldn't have done that, but it's just a lot more satisfying to have it between two people than just one person telling us what has gone on. It ties in with J.J. Um, Abrams' Star Trek movies without rewriting the history from that point. Bit of a mind bender with time travel involved. It's got such a different feel from Discovery as well, and I think that is definitely the right path to go down. Just going to walk past some people here. It's the right path to go down because as much as I enjoy Discovery, it has polarised people. And much like when we had DS9 and Voyager in production at the same time, those series went down very different tones. And I've discovered recently, re-watching both of them, even very different directorial looks in order to distinguish themselves from one another. Now, a lot of people enjoyed both, but some people enjoyed one and not the other. And so by giving these shows, now Picard and Discovery, very different visual and tonal identities, it means that you reach a larger audience and people who may not have enjoyed the more modern storytelling of Discovery might find they enjoy Picard more. And you know, I'm not, I'm not getting into the people who just crap on Discovery for silly reasons because they don't like casting decisions or writing decisions. Actually, writing decisions a bit more of a legitimate argument. Um, look, there are arguments to be made against the way Discovery is produced. I've enjoyed both series, but I see myself enjoying Picard in a different way. Possibly a bit more on the basis of pure nostalgia. Because Next Gen was my trick growing up. So revisiting these characters is wonderful. Um, they've done the best job they can with Brent Spider <laughs> to make him look a bit younger, bless them. Um, and also it helps, he's, you know, he's in a dream sequence. And those dream sequences are great. I haven't even got to Daj yet. The, um, spo don't know why you're watching this if you haven't seen it already, but spoiler alert, is a young android who instinctively trusts Picard when some Romulans try to kidnap her and kill her boyfriend. And this story implies she's somehow related to Data. I had it in my head that Data had left the body of his daughter Lal to the Daystrom Institute, but I went back to the episode The Offspring from Next Gen and I couldn't find any evidence of that. So we have an effective mystery set up this episode and I really like it. 
I like that we immediately introduce the idea of Picard's empathy for sentient life, where he's not drawing a distinction between human life and Romulan life, despite the fact that Romulans are long-time enemies of the Federation. He has his two Romulan staff, servants, friends, I'm not sure. I hope we see more of them because I quite like their sort of down-to-earth nature and there's a bit of the old Romulan bluntness in there as well that I really enjoy. Dentist is just around the corner, which is why I've stopped, um, but it's a very busy road, so I'm staying on the quieter road. Um, yeah, overall, I just thought it was very well scripted and acted, a very different tone to Discovery, a bit more relaxed, but at the same time, it's setting up more of a mystery. And I really enjoy that. I think mysteries are something that the character of Picard investigates really well because he's so methodical. And Patrick Stewart brings the same warmth the later Picard did in the original uh, Next Generation series. God, Next Generation finished in 1994. And here we are back, what, 26 years later, finding out what happened to Picard. Um, but the great thing is, aside from Picard and Data, this show is acknowledging that the world of Star Trek has moved on, and it's exploring new ideas. And I think that's one of the best things that Star Trek can do. I'm hanging out for Ep 2. I've already mentioned my theory of how I think the Daystrom Institute got an android up and running. I think they somehow had access to Lal, but maybe I'm wrong on that. And of course we see Asher at the end of the episode, uh, Daja's twin sister, the other synth, the other android, meeting, um, I forget his name, but played by Harry Treadaway, who is another of the main cast, and a bunch of Romulan refugees apparently in a Borg cube. What's all that about? Look, my interest is suitably peaked. I thought this was a damn near perfect opening episode. The dog is gorgeous. De Niro as number one. And yeah, I can't wait to dive back into it again next weekend. But let me know what you think. Drop me a like. Do subscribe. Uh, I'm going to be doing these every week after the episode drops. So if, you, if you're coming to this not aware, I do this for Doctor Who as well. And I do lots of Doctor Who videos. Um, and I'll be doing this for Picard and Discovery. Uh, so don't forget to like, share and subscribe, but as always, thank you so much for watching and let me know what you think down there in the comments.